In the southern reaches of the Caucasus Mountains, south of Russia and in the heart of Georgia, the land gives way to a small triangle of flat, fertile land, a river valley that broadens out as it meets the Black Sea. Along the hills near the eastern corner of this valley, there's a particularly interesting karst cave formation, known as Satserblia Cave. It's particularly interesting because Satserblia Cave has been populated by humans since prehistory. The evidence suggests that peoples first occupied the cave about 25,000 years ago, and they stayed there for centuries. Humans appear to have left the cave during the last glacial maximum, but they returned about 17,000 years ago. It's difficult to determine when exactly humans permanently left the cave, but the data suggests that bulk habitation seems to have ended or tapered off around 15 to 16,000 years ago. Now, a new research effort has been conducted in Satserblia Cave, as an international team of scientists went spelunking in search of environmental DNA samples. The technique they used is pretty awesome. It's called shotgun metagenomics, and it allows you to sample all of the DNA in a given sample of mud or pond water or something. So in this case, they took six samples of cave soil, or cave mud, carbon dated to be approximately 25.4 to 24.5 thousand years old, and they began analyzing their samples for DNA. The vast bulk of the DNA was prokaryotic in nature, meaning it came from bacteria and archaea. However, 1.3% of the DNA came from eukaryotes. Although being approximately 25,000 years old, the DNA was somewhat degraded. It took a serious effort to reconstruct the DNA, but after they did so, the researchers were able to calculate that they had the genetic material of four species of animals. The sheep, Ovis Ares, the bison, Bos Taurus, the wolf, Canis Lupus, and the human, Homo sapiens. Okay, now this is where it gets really interesting, because the genome of three out of four of these mammals reveals clues about their phylogenetic relationships with the descendant populations that exist in the modern day. That fourth genome belonged to the sheep. The sheep DNA was just too fragmented and too degraded to achieve adequate resolution, so they couldn't match it to any modern species of sheep, and thus they couldn't make any inferences about the evolution and phylogenetics of these ancient animals. The other three animals, the bison, the wolf, and the human, were all relatively less degraded, so they could be reconstructed with greater resolution, and they could be matched to contemporary species. The bison mitochondrial sequences revealed evidence that the sampled animals were more closely related to European bison than American bison. As the American bison are ancestral to the European bison, the researchers concluded that this individual lived after the divergence, and was part of the population that gave rise to the bison living in modern-day Poland and the Caucasus region. These represent two subspecies of European bison. You have populations in Poland and populations in the Caucasus and the samples could not be resolved enough to determine which subspecies the ancient bison was more closely related to. The wolf DNA corresponded to the Eurasian wolves. The researchers say in their paper that the wolf DNA, quote, shares genetic drift with wolves and dogs to the exclusion of coyotes, golden jackals, and other canids, unquote. What this means is that the ancient wolf DNA can be placed in the family tree as an ancestor to wolves and dogs, but similar to the bison DNA, it could not be resolved in enough detail to determine whether the wolf was more closely related to modern wolves or modern dogs. If we could tell which it was, it would tell us whether this ancient wolf in the cave was from a lineage that diverged before or after humans started domesticating dogs. Now, there's also previously researched species of Siberian Pleistocene wolves that are known to be the ancestors of modern-day wolves and dogs, and which experienced a blooming divergence after the last glacial maximum. The authors compared the ancient wolf DNA with other ancient DNA samples taken elsewhere in the region, and they were able to determine that these wolves belonged to a West Eurasian branch of the Eurasian wolf clade, which had existed for at least 10,000 years across the last glacial maximum. 
but is now probably extinct. So it's most likely that these wolves from the Satserblia cave were part of an ancient but now extinct branch of wolves that diverged from the ancestors of modern wolves and dogs, long before the modern-day wolves and dogs themselves emerged sometime around 11,000 years ago. By this time, the ancient wolf lineage of Satserblia cave was probably extinct. Okay, so now we get to the most interesting part of this. Now we get to the human DNA. And this is where things get mega interesting, because the human DNA is actually from a previously unknown human population group. So to give some context, I'll quote a relevant portion from the study. The authors say, quote, Previous studies have revealed two different ancient human lineages from the Caucasus that were distinct from the rest of Pleistocene and early Holocene diversity. A late Upper Paleolithic, about 13.3 thousand years ago, genome from Satserblia Cave, and a Mesolithic, 9.7 thousand year old, genome from the nearby cave of Kotayas Kide revealed Caucasus hunter-gatherer ancestry, a distinct ancient lineage that split from Western hunter-gatherers 45,000 years before present, shortly after the expansion of modern humans into Western Eurasia. A second, older, pre-last glacial maximum lineage is represented by genome-wide data from two individuals dated to 26,000 years before present from Zudzuana Cave, Southern Caucasus, and likely contributed to at least half of the ancestry of later populations in Europe, the Near East, and North Africa." Unquote. Okay, so that was a beast of a passage, so let me kind of break it down into simpler terms. We have these two human lineages. The younger lineage is suspected of having brought uh, Indo-Aryan languages into Europe 3,000 years ago in the Bronze Age, and the older one, the older lineage, is thought to have contributed an impressive portion of genes to many of the peoples in Europe, the Near East, and Africa today. The human DNA that they found in Satserblia Cave turns out to be more closely related to the older lineage, to this pre-last glacial maximum group with, uh, with some of its remnants in the Zudzuana Cave. Now that's pretty cool, but get this. The older lineage was only reported in the scientific literature in 2018, which is really recent, and that reporting was just about the genetic study of, uh, of these two individuals in Zudzuana Cave. So this new study, by linking the human remains in Satserblia Cave to, those, uh, to these Zudzuana individuals, this new study has confirmed them as a new-to-science, previously undocumented human population group with a significant ancestral influence in populations across Europe, the Near East, and Northern Africa. So there you have it, a fascinating glimpse into the lives of West Eurasian mammals, including humans, before and after the last glacial maximum, the last ice age. We see the spread and diversification of the bison and the wolves, and we see the dynamic movements of human population groups across vast regions of the planet. And all of this comes from some DNA that was scooped up in some mud on the floor of a cave. Mm -hmm.